Hello, I'm Soycat and welcome back to the second channel video. Today I wanted to talk about tourist attractions in London that you should perhaps visit if you ever come here because I live on the outer reaches of the city which means I come into central London maybe two to three times a month and I feel like that unique perspective of being halfway between a tourist and a local is something that I could use to help you out because a lot of people when they're locals to a city just say never visit the tourist attractions and you know there is some room for that a lot of tourist attractions are just people traps are just tourist traps or whatever you want to call them but some uh, you know tourist attractions are actually pretty great. Today I wanted to talk about some things that you probably shouldn't visit at least for very long, show you why that is and maybe give you some alternatives as well because right now I'm at Buckingham Palace. This is a cool palace right? It's here in the centre of London except in reality if you speak to anyone from London the way it happens is they walk past one day because it's between a lot of things, we're deep in the heart of central London and they just go oh that's where it is. It happened to me once I was just going for a walk to Victoria Station which is vaguely over there and I came across it. If you're going to the Houses of Parliament or even you can see the London Eye in the background it's just kind of there. It's, in fact, it's so in the centre of the city that you can see there's some busy roads to the side over here and over here. There's a big roundabout here in fact, like this thing that looks like a, a crazy monument. Actually just a roundabout, that's just maybe kind of cool. Uh, the reality of Buckingham Palace is even though it is technically used by royals and it is kind of wacky if you live in a country that has no kings or queens, we have a palace, a literal palace. Look at the size of this thing by the way, like I can't can't express the, the size of what's going on right here. That is kind of cool, I get it, and that's why it's worth looking at, I would say. But what you see is people crowding around here for, you know, like half an hour, an hour, hours at a time in some cases, and they, they just stand at the gates and look at the guards. But the thing about the guards, you can see they're moving right now. They do this cool movement. They've got these muskets. They have to seem inhuman, but it's worth looking at but you can't get too much from staring at them from too many hours. So many people have told me that the thing they want to do is they want to go to Buckingham Palace. It's a thing worth going past and it's a very interesting site, but there's not much you can do here because of how gay stuff it is. There is a lot of private land. There is this gate in front of it that again, in non-corona times is filled with a lot of people usually. And then that's about it. What do I recommend if you want to see some real royal palaces? Well, it's a little outside. I mean, obviously this is a real royal palace in the Sometimes it is used, but um, there is, uh, you know, Windsor Castle, even just a little bit down that way towards Hyde Park, there's Kensington um, Palace, which is used as a museum of some form. Less crowded. Slightly nicer. Cousin. In the middle. Hyde Park. I think it's a Victoria Museum. Wait, what, what museum is it? Yeah, Victoria Museum. It's yeah. the Victoria Museum. I've got a history uh, buff to confirm that one. There's a history museum inside of it. It's pretty cool. You can go inside the palace. Can you go inside this? No. Can you even go inside the walls? No. You can stare from the gates, which I'm not going to touch them. You can stare from the gates and you can look at the man with the gun that won't look back at you because that's their job. Maybe that's cool, but maybe it's not. Kind of like. Actually, wait. One of the benefits of Corona time is this fountain is clearly not filled with water. So something that you can't normally do. Is this? Oh, there's coins down here. I can collect pennies. Oof. Do you think that's like illegal to like pick up the pennies? I'm not sure yet. But might be here. Oh yeah. Just make some money. We're going to get rich. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's quite a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, I could get. Yeah, okay, you know, what? pro tip: come here when the fountains are dried, get yourself some money. As a, as a coin collector, I'm very excited about this. <laughs> So while walking to the second uh, tourist attraction I'd like to point out isn't the best in London, I want to just mention that walking around London is such a great way to see it because you'll be walking down pretty much any street in the centre and you'll see like, oh yeah, here's something kind of royal. Look, there's the royal press. There's a man on a horse. Who's the man on the horse? Does it even matter? It might. You can go read about that. There's a column to the Duke of York. Have you heard of them? I haven't. Look, there's a man over there that's quite famous apparently, Mr. Franklin. Franklin who, I ask? There's just so many like random historic things you find while walking around London. There's a statue of a woman with a lion over here. It is something Campbell. You know, I, again, we, we can learn about all these details or we cannot, but either way, it's like interesting to walk through. If you want to see the random royal history, you can see it walking literally anywhere. Have this way, for instance. Look at these houses and the kind of I, I don't have to describe them, the, the royalness of them. Look at the end of the street, there's this pretty thing the dome, and there's more statues and unique little builds around here. The centre of London's just filled a bit, and that's why I recommend walking around and maybe perhaps passing the next thing I want to talk about. Do you know what I think of when I think of the UK, when I think of London? I think of advertising. What's more British than advertising? Not a single thing. And when I think of uh, advertising that I'd like to go somewhere specifically to see, I come here to Piccadilly Circus, where I can see advertisements for great British companies like Hyundai, or Samsung, or 
uh, the crisis fund that might actually be a British company but or over there you can see LG has got a billboard as well wow this is what I think of when I think of the UK I think of those famous British accessories they're as British as trucks and guns and F-150s right no the reality is is uh, Piccadilly Circus is a giant square which is filled with advertising which is maybe an interesting thing by itself but in reality that makes it just a worse Times Square Times Square New York that is and it's got the same kind of effect as Times Square and it has lots of chain things around here like my favorite British success story M&M World or uh, there's uh, an Angus Steakhouse which is by the way the worst steak chain in the UK I, uh, I like again I every a friend once convinced me to go there saying oh yeah it's not as bad as people say it totally is and they serve fish and chips that is nothing like you'll get anywhere this is honestly a place that I recommend if you want to be somewhere familiar when you're traveling because this is such an international zone with so many chains and McDonald's is but you know I like McDonald's too with the uh, you know it's got a five guys even which is pretty solid it's got an American sweet store this is in reality the part of London you come to when you want to have that kind of like it's home experience if you're from America perhaps or if you just want to see the most intense part of London because this is arguably the center as far as tourism goes this is the center of tourism but as far as is this a place I recommend maybe to pass through a lot of buses come through here because it is a wildly busy traffic junction because you're not What's more British than traffic junctions? Uh, no, the reality is, is this is a place I don't highly recommend to anyone because the only thing that you can do here, the only attraction to it, is that there is a fountain just over here, as you can see. Well, look, there's a fountain and you can sit on it. And people do sit around these. It gets very busy in the summer, but uh, it smells so bad in the fountain, by the way. Like it smells like someone might have urinated in there. Um, so yeah, do you want to smell some urine fountains, hear some traffic and be advertised to by Samsung and walk with Camilla and a nice ad for the NHS. That actually is British. If that, say, if that was there the first time, I'd have seen real silly car. But yeah, uh, I, would, I wouldn't recommend Big Daily Circus for those reasons. It's just a busy place. And if you like busy places advertising, it's just a worse Times Square. Maybe worse Times Square, but British is a thing you like. I mean, the buildings around are all kind of quaint and, you know, short compared to New York. But otherwise, it's just, it's just a place that you can pass through. And even then, I would say if you skipped it, you wouldn't be missing everything. So behind me is Harrods. This is a department store in London because you know what I think sometimes when I'm traveling and I'm exploring a new place, you know what's exclusive to a particular country or city? Shopping. You can't do that anywhere else. You can't find clothes and uh, whatever else they sell in there. I've, I've been a few times, but I can never describe it. It's just a department store and department stores are quite common in a few countries still. They're not quite as common in the UK. This is probably the only last successful one, which is quite fitting because it's also one of the first department stores, not just in the UK, but also in the world. So there is a bit of history to it. There is a little bit of the element of like, oh yeah, the area around it, Knightsbridge, is kind of nice. If you look around here, you can see everything like nice-ish. It's not the richest part of London, but it's the part of London which has to seem the richest. It's next to a bunch of embassies. It's got a lot of like uh, foreign money coming in. So you'll see gold Lambos and stuff. Maybe that's interesting to you. The area as a whole I could maybe recommend. But the problem with Harrods and recommending it specifically is that anyone I know in the UK decides like, I'm not going there for real shopping. I'm going there for the experience of, oh yeah, I did an afternoon tea there. But no one thinks that it's good money for money. No one thinks that it's a good choice. It's just a extravagant one. Uh, department store shopping might be a good idea in some places. Maybe the business model works somewhere. But for the most part, it isn't a successful thing outside of this one store, which you know, survives based on the prestige. If the prestige is enough for you, then sure. But generally speaking, when I'm uh, going somewhere, I don't really need to shop. And if I do need to shop somewhere, Harrods isn't what I would describe as the biggest, best map. It's not, it's not the best at anything. It's just a kind of old, kind of interesting department store. And if that's if department store is the reason you travel, Harrods has got you covered. If literally anything else is the reason, you know, you can give it a miss. Or at the very least, kind of step through on the way somewhere else. Because again, there's lots of things around here which are kind of interesting. So Harrods. So another thing I really don't recommend has to be the London Eye, which is just on the other side of the river to me. It's obviously a lot easier to see on this side than on the side where you'd actually board for it. But right now it's closed. The reason it's closed is also the reason why I really don't recommend it. Because let's be honest, the London Eye at one point was probably a really great idea. It sounds so romantic and wonderful that like, oh yeah, it's this little bubble that slowly goes around. It takes about an hour to do a full revolution. And in that hour, you know, you see a wonderful view of the city. At least at the top you do. For most of the hour, you're just slowly going up or slowly going down. So ignoring that, because that's how ferris wheels work, the reason I don't recommend the London Eye is because, first of all, each of the bubbles holds 12 people, and obviously, good luck social distancing, that's the point of that. But even if you don't care about social distancing, you don't care about your personal space, being in a bubble with 12 other people doesn't sound too bad.
too bad until you realize you have to pay 23 pounds minimum that's the cheapest i could find online 23 pounds minimum to get in there and realistically it's more like 30 or if you do a package it goes as high as like 100 something it's a ludicrously expensive ferris wheel basically that just has the history of being the london eye and at one point it was probably the best way to see the city from the center of the river i mean this is a beautiful part of london just over there behind the scaffolding there's big ben and the uh, you know the famous views you see of the uh, you know parliament and westminster it's some pretty stuff that you will see from there but the reason i don't recommend it is because there is a shard in london now uh, it's a qatari owned skyscraper maybe you can see it as the equivalent of like um I know, the empire state building or whatever tall building is in your city it's not the tallest building in the world although it is the tallest in the eu not at time of speaking anymore but tallest in europe uh outside of russia it's that there's like this super tall building i actually can't see it from there uh where is the shard it's behind uh, the building it's over there, yeah. yeah, behind there, yeah. Man, I it's guess like so. the one spot in London you can't see the shard from. But yeah, I totally recommend walking down the Thames, walking along this river. It's a really nice view and it's a nice icon in the, the sky, I would say. But waiting up for an hour and a half to pay 30-ish pounds to go on a Ferris wheel that's only, uh, you know, a few dozen meters high, when you can go to one of the tallest buildings in the EU, get this amazing view, I just don't personally see the logic in it. And, uh, you know, like, again, it's not one of those things where I'm saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying there is now a better alternative and has been for the last 15 years or so. And obviously people are going to always recommend this. And there's always going to be some benefits to the big spinning wheel over the big building. Maybe if you've been to enough big buildings and you want to see a spinning wheel, but if you haven't been to either and you want to get a good view, the views at the Shard are like staggering and blew my mind when I first went, um, when I first came to London like 10-ish years ago. And I think they'll blow your mind too. Whereas that view will be like, oh, this is nice. Take a picture. Oh, the window's tinted. So, oh, these aren't very good pictures at all and not what I recommend. But yeah, there's the Shard instead. Wait, the Shard, I simp for very hard. So the final thing that I definitely recommend checking out in London, definitely for real, is London Bridge. So just confirm this is London Bridge. Here is London Bridge, named after the City of London, which means that you'll see its crest a few times on here. It's a really fancy bridge named after a really interesting part of London. However, is it a part that you should visit? I'm going to say no. And the reason I'm going to say that is because when you picture London Bridge, you're not actually picturing London Bridge. So just to show you really quickly, let's go on a walk along it because it's exciting and it's novel and it's interesting, right? No, in reality, London Bridge is a okay enough bridge bridge sure it does exist as you can see it's got a nice little arch to it and along the way you're going to see again things like it's, this is the fanciest grip bin i've seen in my entire life it's got the city of london crest on a grip bin have you ever seen a grip bin this fancy but you haven't look at the city of london crest on this little sign ec4 sure there's some nice things that history nerds like me like enjoy but if you act like me yeah I, I, that's a thing that might, you know, might be the case but in reality um you know most people this is just a bridge to the bridge that you're excited for the bridge you want to see in london is not london bridge the bridge everyone's thinking of even british people are guilty of this one too is tower bridge over there so as you can see looking in that direction that is tower bridge it goes like this to let boats through it's very cool it's very unique it's very interesting whereas this london bridge right here is it's just a bridge with a slight bend in it. And here's the thing, I mentioned how you might like it if you've got like the history interest, but actually if you like the historical London Bridge, where I actually recommend heading is Lake Havasal City in Arizona. There's a city that bought the old London Bridge because this one was built in 1969, I want to say, and they sold the old bridge to a guy in Arizona who also thought, by the way, it was Tower Bridge supposedly, that's the uh, urban myth. And uh, yeah, fun fact, London Bridge is not London Bridge. What you picture as London Bridge is not the same as what London Bridge is. And as a result, you might end up buying the wrong bridge. It's a very expensive mistake. It can cost you a few hundred million or at the very least, some amount of time in your trip that could be spent going to the Tower Bridge. It's cool. It goes like this. There's a museum. You can learn about why it's, why they have to do it. It's got it's got blue tops. Of, you know, I'll, I'll show you some close-up shots now. It's a really cool bridge. Check it out. What you shouldn't check out is this bridge unless, uh, you know, there is the Borough Mark at the South. Kind of nice. I don't hate that entirely. Um, in fact, it's, it's pretty nice. There's a lot of things I like down there. Um, to the north, there's the city. Not many tourist reasons to go there, but you know, if you're passing through anyway, why not? But unless you're using it as a bridge, it's not a very exciting bridge. There are so many bridges on the Thames. Like to get here, we walk past literally seven of them, um, including in this clip right here, you can see there's three in a row. There's a lot of bridges going across London. And London Bridge, funnily enough, is one of the least interesting of all of them. Go to Westminster Bridge, go to Tower Bridge, go to even um, Blackfriars Bridge, you'll have a better time than here at London Bridge. Because again, the real London Bridge is in Arizona, which sounds like a joke, but it's a real thing we've covered in another video. So yeah, go to Arizona for the real London Bridge, come to London for the fake one. Sounds goofy, but it's true. One bridge, 
two bridge, three bridge, or two and a half bridges. So yeah, that's my kind of local-ish perspective on London and what you should visit if you come here. There are so many things to do in London. It is one of my favorite cities in the world. The reason that I choose to be based here, despite having a job that I can mostly do on the internet, is because I love so much about London and there's so many great things about it. But today we focus on the negative. Let me know if you'd like to see a video talking about the things I do recommend. Obviously, I think people are more interested in seeing something tore down than built up perhaps, and that's what I did here. But if you want to see the building up of some of my favorite parts of London, even things that are famous sites, like I, I think Trafalgar Square, good idea the british museum it's so good that other countries regularly call to get their stuff back you know how much does it cost to pillage a country several hundred million where can you do it for free or get the benefits of doing it for free british museum it's wonderful um but yeah i've got a lot of recommendations and also a lot of like trivia about london let me know if you'd like to see it in the future comments or something anyway thank you for watching second channel don't care goodbye i can just reach in through the window Wait, is that 5p going to help me? Oh, it's 60p for a phone call. That's expensive, right? You can even see Parliament from here. <laughs>